all over the world the people are celebrating christmas and all uh the other day i was just seeing a video uh it's a, it's a comedy video right like uh, you know uh, there are three places in three countries how the people are celebrating the christmas <laughs> and uh, uh, the first one is uh, in america and the next one is in uk and the next one is in india especially in kerala you know uh, the american people and the uk people you know the kingdom they all uh, celebrate christmas very calmly and you know quietly singing songs and calm they are just uh, singing songs and worshiping and celebrating uh, and they ha- they are having all other celebrations in that be only but the the third video is different in <laughs> the third video the kerala people excuse me the kerala people uh, the kerala people are you know going to every houses and uh, uh, they are singing and jumping and making sound and uh, you know they are crawling like anything and uh, uh, they are singing songs and uh, are standing there to get something huh for money they are celebrating christmas and after getting this money they are going to the bar see this is the difference that uh, the people are celebrating when i was seeing that you know uh let us not be the people those who are simply celebrating the christmas so let us not be the people those who are uh simply uh, you know singing songs and simply celebrating something uh, because we understand that when we are celebrating something uh, every season and every celebration has got a spiritual meaning amen hallelujah so we are celebrating the seasons and we are celebrating the uh, i mean celebrations with a meaning with a spiritual meaning it's not simply that we are doing that but we know that you know during the christmas time we are j- just remembering uh, god's love that god sent his son to this world to become a human he was he was god and he became uh, he took the flesh and he came to this world to save every one of us as a human being amen so we are thankful to god for everything that god is giving uh, us as a gift jesus christ is the gift so let us all uh, turn our attention to luke chapter um, uh, chapter 2 uh, i i i know that i was uh, uh, preaching last year i was preaching in the christmas on the christmas sunday about uh, what's it in a name what's it in a name from isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and today's message is the birth of jesus the gospel of inclusivity the birth of jesus the gospel of inclusivity okay yesu vende jananam endayirunnu swigaridiyude oru suvishesham ayirunnu swigaridiyude suvishesham ayirunnu yesu christu vende jananathilude aneeke aalukale yesu ingilekku adippikkugeyum yesu vende aa suvishesham aa gospel aneegarodu parayugeyum അനേക ആൾക്കാരെ അക്സെപ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയും ചെയ്തായിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സുവിശേഷമായിരുന്നു യേശു ക്രിസ്തുവിൻ്റെ ജനനത്തിലൂടെ നാം കാണുവാൻ തക്കണം പടിയായി തീർന്നു ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ലുക്ക് ചാപ്റ്റർ ടു വേഴ്സസ് ടെൻ ടു ഫോർട്ടീൻ സ്പെഷ്യലി ഫ്രം വേഴ്സ് നയൻ സോ ദ ദ തീം ഈസ് ബർത്ത് ഓഫ് ജീസസ് വി നോ അബൌട്ട് ബർത്ത് ഓഫ് ജീസസ് വട്ട് ഈസ് ദി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് വട്ട് ഈസ് ദ സിഗ്നിഫിക്കൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ബർത്ത് ഓഫ് ജീസസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദോസ് തിങ്സ് അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം what are the benefits that we are receiving and what are the outcomes that we are seeing in this world through the birth of jesus christ okay so that is the gospel the birth of jesus christ itself is a gospel it's a it's a it's a matter of gladness it's a matter of joy it's a matter of celebration it's a matter of jumping and praising god's name because oh, a, a baby is born for every one of us it is for all the people it is for all the people not for a particular group of people but jesus was born for every one of us all the categories of the people in this world that's the reason i told you that the gospel of inclusivity okay yesu vende jananam endayirunnu swikaryathiyude suvishesham ayirunnu anege aalukale swigarikkuvanum anege aalukale accept cheyyuvanum ulladayirikkana manasodu kodiyana i mean pidavai deivam yesu christuvine bhoomilekke aikkunnathu hallelujah but we see that today the world is everywhere we see full of exclusiveness right full of exclusiveness that means you know the people are excluding someone 
the people are not able to accept everyone you know there are some churches they are not able to accept everyone hmm? there are some pastors they are not able to accept everyone there are some communities and societies they are not able to include everyone they are excluding someone and accepting some people and some communities some societies and some churches as their own because they like them but we understand jesus and his message is not for an exclusive message but jesus message is going to all the people to include everyone to include everyone so in this christmas day in this celebration day let us all think about what how jesus was trying to accept all the people and how jesus was uh, i mean uh, uh, trying to i mean include every person every people every group of people into his uh, message okay so you know let's read that portion maybe luke chapter 2 uh, verses 10 to 14 i've read it for you and if you can read with me just i mean read with me okay in from your bible from your bible open your bibles i think you have the bible right you have the bible thank you so it's, it's it will not come there only one verse is there in the screen take your bible open your bible if you have a uh, device open it take the bible and read with me i'm reading luke chapter 2 verses 10 to 14 and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord and this shall be a sign unto you you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger and suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace good will towards men okay now everyone together read with me verse 10 verse 10 and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people hallelujah so here we understand that the message of jesus christ was really a good news for all the people all the people that means the birth of jesus christ is reminding that jesus was ready to accept everyone jesus was able to accept everyone and he was including every person in this world into his message amen even we understand that gospel of matthew and gospel of luke they are i mean these are the books that which gives a, a clear explanation about uh, the birth of jesus christ okay matthew and luke that i mean gives us a clear explanation about uh, the birth of jesus christ and uh, especially the chapters 1 and 2 chapter 1 of matthew and chapter 2 uh, of uh, i mean uh, luke and chapter 1 and 2 of luke also that they are trying to emphasize i mean how jesus was born and what was the importance of the birth of jesus christ and he, they, they they are trying to tell us that you know jesus was trying and god the father was trying to include everyone into his kingdom even in matthew we understand that matthew Uh, uh, the, the writer of the book of Ma gospel of Matthew, he is emphasizing and picturizing Jesus as a king and Mark is picturizing as a servant and Luke is picturizing as a, as a son of man and John is picturizing Jesus as a son of God. Okay, so the place even, you know, the, all the events which was related with the birth of Jesus Christ is important and significant. We understand the birth of Jesus Christ was a significant moment in the history. The birth of Jesus Christ was a significant moment in the history. And event itself, the event of birth of Jesus Christ itself is a significant thing in the history. And the time of the birth of Jesus Christ was very significant. The time of the birth of Jesus Christ. Because it is already written in the, in the I think in the... Um, Ephesians or Galatians that we read that uh, I mean in, in, in the fullness of time that happened right 
in the fullness of time. Kalat, Kala Sampurna the ill, Ale, Kala Sampurna the ill Namukuva and Jenicha Christu. In the fullness of time means, you know, it was not accidentally happened. The birth of Jesus Christ was not happening accidentally, but it was with a purpose. Amen. So God has a purpose that this is the time, this is the due time that Jesus is supposed to born. So the time of the birth of Jesus Christ was significant in the history. The situation of the birth of Jesus Christ, the circumstances when it was happening, it was significant in the history because when already it was foretold, it was prophesied about the birth of Jesus Christ and the place was important. Bethlehem, it was, it was written already prophesied in Micah, in the book of Micah that this is going to happen in Bethlehem, the birth of Jesus Christ going to happen. So we understand, you know, the birth of Jesus Christ has got a social, economical, geographical, historical and scriptural importance. Okay, So every, everything comes together and makes sense that Jesus was born with a purpose. Jesus was born in Bethlehem with a purpose. It was not accidentally happened. Okay, So we understand economically there is importance geographically, historically and scripturally. Scripturally means, you know, there are many places which is already mentioned and prophesied by the Old Testament prophets that, uh, I mean, one boy is going to be born in Bethlehem. Okay? About the birth of Jesus Christ, there are many times in, in, the, in, in Old Testament that we understand. Even we understand from this, uh, I mean, chapter 2, we are reading that, you know, it was during the time of Augustus Caesar that this event was happening. Okay? The Augustus Caesar was the Roman Empire in those days. And we understand that Augustus Caesar was the adopted son of Julius Caesar. Okay? So Augustus Caesar is the, is the emperor when Jesus was, Jesus was born. At the same time, Julius Caesar is the no no Julius Caesar adopted this uh, Augustus Caesar as the uh, as as a son and Julius Caesar on those days was known as the god and he was uh, proclaiming to all the people that you all are supposed to worship me the Julius Caesar he was uh, giving his degree that uh, you know you are supposed to worship me and after Julius Caesar this Augustus Caesar comes and Augustus Caesar is known as the son of god because Julius Caesar was known as the God, as, a, as an emperor, he was known as the God and he was uh, I mean, telling all the people to worship him. And now the Augustus Caesar came into the, into, the, into the throne and he also was known as the son of God. At the same time, you know, the, the spirit of the Lord was telling, the angels were telling that a son of God is going to be born in Bethlehem because you are saying that you are the son of God now and Julius Caesar is saying that you are the God and uh, Augustus Caesar is saying that you are the son of God but you are not God and you are not son of God. I mean, Jesus Christ is the son of God. Jesus Christ is the son of man and he is going to be born in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. And we understand everything works according to the word of God. Everything works according to the scripture. You know, the scripture says something and that is going to fulfill. Even, you know, in, uh, during the time of this, uh, I mean, Julius Caesar and uh, uh, the Roman Empire, uh, Augustus Caesar, I mean, these people were, uh, I mean, taking the census of the people every 14 years. Okay? And that was the right time that, uh, you know, during the birth of, uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, they were supposed to take the census and uh, they were supposed to, I mean, uh, it, it was a military purpose and also tax purposes. And they were, I mean, they were supposed to uh, uh, register their families in, uh, in their own countries and their own towns. Okay? And these people, uh, Mary and Joseph, they were, I mean, I mean, they had to travel almost 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. You know, from 80 miles they were traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem to register their name. You know, what happens in the life of Mary and Joseph is clearly we understand that it is according to the word of God. It is according to the scripture that everything was happening. And today, this, this morning, we have to understand one thing. You know, whatever happens in the history that makes sense that we are the people of God. And we received Jesus only because... Because Jesus was born 
in Bethlehem for all people, not for a particular people, group of people, but for all the people. Even in uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 38, that Mary said that, let it happen to me according to thy word. In Luke chapter 1 verse 38, Mary said, let it happen to me according to thy word. When angel was saying to Mary that this is going to happen and you are going to be, I mean, uh, uh, getting a son, getting a boy. And uh, he, she was not actually understanding all these things, the histories and all those things. But at the same time, she said that, let it happen to me according to thy word. Which means, he, she was clearly knowing one thing that something is going to happen in my life, in my family life, that is going to fulfill the promises and fulfill the prophecies which already made in the Old Testament. And he, she was knowing that, Mary was knowing that, I am going to become a part of the fulfillment of the prophecies and promises of God. She was knowing something that which is going to happen and she was knowing that, I mean, this birth of Jesus Christ is going to be noted in the history. And at the same time, she was knowing, you know, I am going to take part of this and I am going to, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, uh, give birth for a child and that will be mentioned in the history that my name also will be there because that is the fulfillment of the prophecy and promises of God which is mentioned in the Old Testament. And we understand, you know, the Savior would be a human. It, it, was the, it was the prophecy already made in the Old Testament that the promise was given that the Savior would be a human and he is not going to be an angel. Not going to be an angel, a human. And he is going to be a Jew, not a Gentile. Already in the Old Testament it is written, he is going to be a Jew, not a Gentile. He would be from the tribe of Judah and from the family of David. And he is going to be born of a virgin. And he will be born in Bethlehem, the city of David. Because everything which was already mentioned in the scripture had happened in the fullness of time. In the fullness of time. Okay. So let us go to the point number one. That it says that Jesus was including everyone. So when we see that, we understand, you know, Jesus Christ was always, you know, even, even in his public ministry, at his birth and everywhere, he was trying to accept all the people. There are many I mean, examples that we are seeing in the Bible, especially um, and during the time of the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay, the first, pe first people, uh, the first example is the shepherds. Okay, think about the shepherds in uh, Luke chapter 2, verses uh, uh, 8 to 10, especially read maybe uh, verse, verse 9. Yeah, Luke chapter 2, verse 9. Okay, so the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. Okay, so what about the shepherds? The first point is the shepherd. Uh, when, when, I mean, God was giving the, the, the message for the, I mean, I mean, shepherds, we understand, you know, God, Jesus Christ was, I mean, trying to accept all the people. Jesus was trying to accept all the people and he was trying to include every people from each and every realms of their lives. When we understand the shepherds, when we study about the shepherds, the shepherds are, the rep are representing the outcast people. The shepherds are outcast people and they are very humble people, marginalized people in the society. In those days, we understand these people are known as the poor people, uneducated people, uncultured people, unclean people. You know, they are known as the outsiders. The shepherds are known as the outsiders during the time of Jesus Christ. Because they were going, I mean, place to place and one place to another place. And they were, uh, you know, uh, taking the flock to the pastures and they are keeping uh, the flock in different places. And uh, as they are known as the outsiders and they are, as they are known as the I mean, unclean people, outside people, they were not allowed to enter into the temple of God for the worship. The shepherds were not able to and they were not allowed to enter into the temple for the worship service. 
you know but we understand but the lord was putting them in the top name top list of the invitees of the birth of jesus christ okay so what we do uh, you know when when we are having a special program or special uh, uh, celebration or something like that maybe birthday celebration or graduation celebration and uh, or marriage also we we put a list right we put a list and we are uh, adding the names the important people in the top of the list and the the uh, non important people then after that after that after the, all these things okay and we if we can, if we want to you know if uh, i mean more people are there we will delete the the down ones right you know not the top ones the down ones so listen to the to the i mean uh, when we come to the birth of jesus christ we understand that jesus christ was born during the during the birth of jesus christ god was announcing this message to the shepherds and shepherds were coming to the first list okay i mean they they were the they were the first people who were coming to the first group or the or the or the top of the list and they are considered as the important people at the birth of jesus christ that is the reason i told you that you know why jesus or why god was i mean allowing the shepherds to receive the message first of all and why these people were receiving this message first of all you know there were there were other people there were other priests and scribes were there there were kings and emperors were there but god was giving the first message to the shepherds because god wanted to allow all the people the poor people the humble people uneducated people uncultured people into the message of god into the message of god hallelujah so that is what uh, we understand that's the reason jesus once said that okay he had come to seek and to save the lost he had come to seek and save the lost so the, he understand god understand that the shepherds are just like uh, the humble people they are poor people they are not educated no they are unclean people they are not uh, i mean well being people means you know they don't have a uh, a prominent place in the in the society but jesus said no no i came to this world to save all those people also that area is covered by i mean jesus birth and even you know when we when we study about the the i mean a uh, ministry of jesus christ the uh, you can say the public ministry of jesus christ jesus christ was uh, uh, considering all the people and jesus christ was attracting all the people we understand jesus was going to and approaching all the people all the society people and he was not going only for the jewish people but he was going to the gendal people and he was uh, i mean approaching all other people in in different culture and different uh, i mean areas and different background and big different family members you know he was approaching all the people and he was attracting and including all the people even in his 12 disciples also you know when he was calling the people he was calling the people from different categories and he was i mean including people from different areas and he was uh, i mean giving the ministry and they were doing his ministry because he they were understanding that okay even i am a fisherman soundly chirutte ha professor adu nattu onnu angane nattu okay nee korakkanda eta njan korcha njan ingane athi pichola okay um sadhiche endha eda kande evada irun nammal ipo fishermen okay so jesus was including all the fishermen and jesus was including all the outcast people why jesus was doing that why jesus was approaching all the people because he understand that you know in the kingdom of god not only the rich people are there but also the poor people are there the outcast are there the outcast are there the poor people are there the humble people are there everyone together they are coming to the church and worshiping god because i mean everyone is important in the kingdom of god everyone is important in the in the church of jesus christ hallelujah so that is the reason that jesus was uh, i mean bringing all these people even in luke chapter 2 verse 9 we are reading an age of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terrified we see the glory of god is shone around the shepherds you know these people these uneducated people these uncultured people these people very humble and poor you know they were not able to, they were not worthy to see the glory of god 
Even we understand in the book of Exodus, we understand that Moses was not able to stand before the glory of God when the glory of God was appearing in front of him. He was not able to I mean, stand before the glory of God. And he was peaceless and he was, I mean, he was I mean, not able to do anything because he understand in front of the glory of God, I am nothing. At the same time, we understand even in the temple also, when uh, the, the Solomon's temple was dedicating, you know, those people, the priests were not able to stand there because the glory of God was, uh, I mean, coming down and it was filled with the temple and the priests were not able to stand there. But the same glory now coming for the shepherd people. The same glory to include even the humble people, to include the poor people, to include the uneducated people, to include the uncultural people, the people from different background, that glory is coming upon them. It is written, the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified because it was not easy for standing in front of the glory of God. What kind of interesting thing that he was providing his glory for the people of shepherds. Secondly, the second group of people, we read in Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 and 11 also. Yeah, Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 and 11. Okay, what is that verse? Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, his men from the east came to Jerusalem. And in verse 11, we read that on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Okay, so this we understand, you know, the wise men are the second group of the people. The first group is the shepherds. Okay, and the second group that to, to, to prove that Jesus' birth was inclusivity, you know, he was including everyone, the shepherds. And the secondly, we understand the second group is the wise men. You know, the wise men, it says that the wise men are the universal, the representing the universal inclusivity of Jesus Christ. We read in, uh, in different translations like uh, the wise men, the, what is it, the Magi? Magi, Magi, Namala Parenu? Okay, uh, okay, and uh, I mean, some people are saying that okay, uh, three kings, uh, three kings are there. Moon Raja Kumara one in the world, he's still in the one in a part of body letting like I knew some. And there's the water. Yehu the Ayle, Uruga Matil, Uruvadu Masatil, Fullerum Davil, Ravartirunu. Ah, Munu Raja can Mareti. No, so some people are saying, some translations say three kings from the east. Anyway, these people, the wise men, represents the group of scholars. The group of scholars and who they, they studied about the stars and they are the astrologers. Eh? So maybe they are kings, maybe they are magis, or maybe they are wise men, who are maybe they are scholars. They know everything about the star. That's the reason that the star of Jesus Christ was appeared in the sky. Right? You know, they know about the meaning of a sky. And they know about the meaning of the star. They are the scholars and they know everything. And even the visit of the wise men shows the love of Jesus doesn't have boundaries in them. Even in the culture, even in the ethnicity, even in the nationality and in the social status is not important for the people, for, for, for God. You know, everywhere that the message is passed and God is giving the same message for all the people, only, not only for the wise men, but also for the shepherds. Like, you know, these people were knowing everything. At the same time, Jesus was including them also into the message of the gospel of Jesus' birth. Amen. And thirdly, the third one is Joseph, the third one, the Joseph the carpenter and Mary, housewife. Okay, we know who were those people, Joseph and Mary. You know, in uh, uh, Luke chapter two, verses four and five, we are reading that. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea 
to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. So when we study about Joseph and Mary, Mary and Joseph, they are the ordinary people. They are just an ordinary people. You know, they have nothing to say about themselves and they have nothing to boast about themselves. They, they are very poor and, uh, you know, he, uh, Joseph was a, uh, was a carpenter and Mary was just a housewife. Nothing to say about anything. Okay, but understand that, you know, the, the, the time has come and God was selecting these people as the earthly parents of Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus Christ was born into this world as a God and a human being, as a, as a, as a full time, you know, God and man, we understand when God was selecting and choosing Mary and Joseph as the earthly parents for Jesus Christ. Why? It was, the meaning is written there, Joseph and Mary represents the ordinary people. Remember one thing, even though Joseph and Mary, they were ordinary people, when Jesus was born through Mary, they became extraordinary people, right? They became famous people all around the, around the world. You know, every time, every season of the Christmas, we are, I mean, talking few words about Mary and Joseph, right? You know, without Mary and Joseph, there is no Christmas. Okay? Without Jesus, there is no Christmas. But without Joseph and Mary, there is no Christmas. Because we understand that this is the main and important thing that we understand that even, you know, God is accepting all the people. Even in First Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 to 29, we are reading that how we were selected as the children of God. Amen. How we got the, the chance and opportunity to become the children of God. How we got the opportunity to receive Jesus as a personal savior. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 to 29, we, are, we read that. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. You know, we, you and me, are not able to stand in, the front, in front of God. And we are not worthy to be called as the children of God. We are not, I mean, able to, I mean, stand as the, the, the member of, of, of a kingdom of God. But by God's grace that we are here, by God's grace that we are, now we are worshipping God. We are saying that we are the saints of God. We are saying that we are the children of God. The reason is written in First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 to 29. What is that? You know, we cannot consider ourselves like anything. Because brothers, you, not many of you were wise we were not wise when we were coming to Jesus Christ. We were not wise when we were receiving Jesus as a personal savior. You know, it, it, it is written that, you know, you, according to I mean, worldly standard, you were not wise. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. You know, when God wanted to shame the wise people, he chose the foolish people. And then, and also we read that, you know, uh, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. And God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Today, we have nothing to boast about ourselves because we understand it's only because of the grace of God. It's only because of the grace of God that we are standing here, we are sitting here, and we are called as the saints of God, the children of God. When Kartavani Aradiki Sudikin Chayimbol, Urikarno Salim, number the Kame Yogi Dundai, and the Pache, number Kartavan Diedu, number the Village Word, the Richu, Asia Christian, and number the Hula till Swigger, Richa in Paul, Namaka Velagetti. Hallelujah. You know, we are the important people in the process. God because we received Jesus as our personal Savior and the Lord in our heart. Hallelujah. So that's what we understand. You know, Joseph and Mary, they are the ordinary people, but when God was including them and when God was choosing them as the earthly parents, they became the extraordinary people. They became the famous people all over the world. That means God was including those people also, the ordinary people also into his kingdom. And the fourth one. The fourth one is mentioned in Luke chapter 2, verses 7 
and 12. <coughs> Luke chapter 2, verses 7 and 12. Okay. Any, any one of you can read that from, from the screen maybe. Verse 12 also. <clears throat> okay. So the manger is one of the important things that we have to understand. That Jesus Christ was including everyone. Not only the shepherds. Not only the wise men. Not only the famous people. But Jesus was including all the people into his kingdom into his presence. The major is one of the important things that we understand from this portion that it's a, it's a representation of the humility and accessibility. Major is the representation of the humility of Jesus Christ and also the accessibility of Jesus Christ. For sure we understand and he was when he was in the manger he was surrounded by the animals. Okay, so this is a you know this is the place that uh, even even uh, uh, we understand that uh, uh, the shepherds were uh, I mean I mean the, the wise men were going to the to the Herod's palace. Okay, but Jesus was not in palace. You know, if it if if Jesus was born in palace, then the shepherds could not have the chance to visit him. If Jesus was born in some other houses, you know, the, as, as strangers, these people will not be going there because they cannot come directly to that house because they are strangers. But it was only because Jesus was, was laid in the manger. You know, I, I believe that Jesus was not born in the manger, but Jesus was born before that and he was laid in the manger. At the same time, the manger for the Jewish people, it is important uh, for, for the for, for the camels and for their animals, like you know, the manger is the place that the food is. The, I mean, I mean, uh, placed there, and the animals are coming there and having the food from there. For the physical food, the the Jewish people they are giving for the animals that the physical food is available in the manger. At the same time, it is it is it is made of hay. In the So so even though we understand, you know, for the people of God. The manger, the birth of Jesus Christ in the manger or Jesus was laid in the manger means that we understand that the spiritual food is available. The bread of life is available from the manger where Jesus is born. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me tell you one thing that we are receiving the word of God. We are receiving the spiritual food from God and, uh, and through the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, we are allowed to take the spiritual food for the health of our spiritual life. Amen. So we are receiving that and also we understand this is the I mean, representation of the humility and the accessibility of Jesus Christ. Even in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 we are reading that for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. Hallelujah, what a, what, a, what a meaningful and tremendous verse it is. That he says that, Paul says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through he wa though he was rich, though Jesus was rich, amen, yet for your sake he became poor. He became poor. And also so that you through his poverty might become rich. We are rich today, spiritually in all the realms of our lives, we understand we are rich people. Only because of the grace of God. Only because that Jesus was born into a, into a hum, humiliated situation. Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus was born in a poor family. We understand we become rich people spiritually. Hallelujah. Let's enjoy that. And even when we think about the inclusivity of Jesus Christ, we are also supposed to do that. As a church, we are also supposed to do that. Let's surrender our life to the presence of God. Let's say to the Lord, oh Lord, we are coming to your presence of Master. You know, there are some churches and there are some pastors. I understand and I know that, you know, those people, those pastors and churches are always praying for rich people. Lord, send rich people into our church. Eh? Send rich people into our church because we want to build the church building. You know, only one purpose. 
you know so we want to do something so and 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 the pastor will get the tithe okay here i'm not getting the tithe directly so thank you for that at the same time you know some people are praying and some churches are praying lord only send the rich families rich families in your church because we need to do something we need to do something that's true if you are getting a rich family very good very good accept them at the same time don't neglect the poor families don't neglect the poor people don't neglect the uneducated people don't neglect the uncultured people because they are also the members of the kingdom of god because when jesus was coming into this world he was accepting everyone he was telling i mean i'm including every one of them because you know he understand that uh, the the kingdom of god is not only for the for a group of people the kingdom of god is not only for the shepherd people the kingdom of god is not only for the 